Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at qualified business income deduction. And this is section 199A of the new tax cuts and jobs act of 2019. This topic is covered in income tax course. It's definitely covered on the CPA exam starting 2019 and it will be covered on the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers, that's you, to connect with me on a professional level. If you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should have a LinkedIn account. It's very good for your professional image as well as your networking effort. Uh, if you have a Facebook, you, could you can like my Facebook page and connect with me on my personal Facebook. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. So once I place a new lecture, you are aware of it and you are up to date. If you like my lectures, please like them press on the like button, put them in playlist, share them with friends so more people can benefit. And this is my Twitter handle. I do have a website where I house all my lectures organized by chapter and course. Now, if you are viewing this recording, you are either an accounting student or you are a CPA candidate. And either, in either case, I would like to let you know that this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can find hundreds of hours of video lectures similar to this one, as well as thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution on Jaeger CPA review, simulations, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards. What's unique about Jaeger? Jaeger followed the blueprint for the AI CPA for the CPA exam. If you are a CPA candidate or if you are just a college student and you would like to supplement your resources, I strongly suggest you sign up for an account. The, if you use PMF code, you will get 15% off of the best valued course, best valued CPA course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So what is the idea of qualified business income deduction? So what is the overall idea? Well, the overall idea is to level the playing field between the C Corp and other form of taxpayers. Okay, so basically we have C Corp. And the C corporation now, they have a flat rate of 21%. Now, you can operate as a C corp or you can operate as a sole proprietorship. You could operate in a partnership or you can operate as an S corp. So notice here, what happened is this. The C corp has a 21% flat rate. What about the other ones? The other ones, they are a different form of business and what happened is they're going to be taxed at a higher rate because that that's that those are tax flow entities the income is going to flow to the taxpayer therefore what the government said to level the playing field we should give this group which is doesn't doesn't have to be this specific those three groups but any non corporate taxpayer any non c corporate taxpayer the ability to have a deduction to make their tax rate comparable to the 21% because the C corp rate is flat 21%. So this is the overall idea is to level the playing field between the C corp and the non corp businesses. Okay. So under the tax cuts and jobs act of 2017 section 199a, this is the, uh, this is the code section was added to the internal revenue code. So this is basically a new session, new section. It allows up to 20% deduction on qualified business income of a non-corporate taxpayer. This deduction is potentially available to individual, trust, and state, any non-corporate. Any non-corporate could potentially have this deduction. So what happened if you are an owner in a partnership or an owner in an S corporation? What's going to happen? You're going to receive a K-1, and on the K-1, they will tell you what is your income, and you will be able to figure out your qualified business income deduction. Okay. Keep in mind, this is temporary from 2018 to 2025, okay? And this deduction has a lot of definition, limitation, and special rules, which we'll be going over in this session. Not necessarily everything, especially we will not be covering all the limitation here. And from a, uh, from a tax perspective, from a form perspective, this is where you find qualified business income deduction on the, on the 1040. Notice it's right before taxable income. So it's after AGI. So this deduction is from AGI. So notice adjusted gross income is right here, line seven, and it, it's on line nine, you have your qualified business income deduction. Then this is your last deduction before you get to your, what's called, not called, before you get to your taxable income. 
okay? So let's go ahead and start to dive into the deduction for qualified business income. What are the general rules, okay? The deduction for qualified the deduction for qualified business income is 20% of qualified business income generated through a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or an S corporation. Basically, those are non-corporate taxpayer, and hopefully you know, those are tax flow entities. It means the income goes from the business to the taxpayer. Okay, so what is the general deduction? So this is the general rule. The deduction is the lesser of 20% of qualified business income or 20% of modified taxable income. Obviously, those two terms need to be need to be defined. What is qualified business income and what's modified taxable income? And we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do so in the next few minutes. Okay, there are three limitations to this 20% deduction. The first limitation, it's an overall limitation based on modified taxable income. Basically, as long as your modified taxable income is below a certain amount, you're good. But once your modified taxable income exceeds a certain amount, then we have we have different limitation. Then another limitation that applies to high income taxpayer, and the third limitation to applies to certain type of service businesses. So you have three type of limitation for the qualified business income. In this session, we only cover this one. We don't cover two and three. The second and the third limitation only applies when the taxable income before before the qualified business income exceeds 315 for married file, filing joint, joint return or 175-500 for all other taxpayers. Again, we don't have to worry about uh, this. In any case, Section 129 may not exceed 20% of the taxpayer modified taxable income. So the maximum will be deduction that you would receive is 20% of modified taxable income. So let's go ahead and define what do we mean by modified taxable income? What do we mean by qualified business income? So what is your modified taxable income? Well, your modified taxable income is your taxable income before the deduction for qualified business income. So it's your taxable income, not including this deduction. And we have to take out of your taxable income reduced by any net gain. What do we mean by net capital gain? It includes both capital gain, which is the excess long-term capital gain over long short-term capital losses, and any qualified uh, dividend income. So if I have to put this on a formula, I would say taxable income, and this not including, not including qualified business income you don't include this then you take out of it long-term capital gain and you take out of it qualified dividend and this is what's going to give you what's called modified taxable income and this is what's going to give you modified taxable income so this is how you come up with modified taxable income Okay, so this so in case you are looking, what is modified taxable income? Hopefully, I just told you how you compute your modified taxable income. Now, the second thing we're going to have to compute, obviously, is qualified business income. What is a qualified business income? Qualified business income is defined as ordinary income less ordinary deduction. Da, it's your, it's revenue minus expenses. What is your revenue from the business minus your expenses from a business from a qualified trade or business? Now, now we need to define what's a qualified trade or business conducted in the United States by a taxpayer. So it has to be conducted in the US. So what is qualified business income? Uh, well, it also include distributive share of this amount for each partnership or S corporation interest held by the taxpayer. So it does include that. Qualified business income does not include what does exclude. So this is important. Certain type of investment income, such as capital gain or capital losses, that's excluded. Dividend, that's excluded. Interest income, unless properly allocable to a trade or business such as lending, if you're in the lending business. Certain other investment income, other investment income. Nor it does include the reasonable compensation paid to a taxpayer with respect to unqualified trade or business. So your qualified business income does not include what's called reasonable expectation, or it does not include guaranteed payment made to a partner for services rendered. So if we give guaranteed payment, that's not included in the qualified business income. We have to take it out of qualified business income. Okay? 
Uh, what is qualified trade or business? Because that's another definition that came up. What's qualified trade or business? For taxpayer who fall below critical taxable income threshold, which we talked about established earlier, you know, the 315 and the 175. A qualified, the qualified trade or business is very broad. In general, it includes any trade or business other than providing services as an employee. The taxable income threshold we talked about earlier, it has to be below 315 and 175, 500 for all other taxpayers if you are not married filing jointly. <coughs> Sorry. As a result, the deduction is available to sole proprietary, independent contractor, and non-corporate owners of S, partnership, and LLCs. So all these businesses, as long as their <coughs> income is below this amount, and as long as they don't belong to a specific group of businesses, which we're going to talk about later, then they qualify. It's a qualified trade. High income taxpayer who are engaged in a business involving the performance of services in certain specified field are subject to certain restriction. We'll talk about this later. Just know that it, in, it include all businesses except few businesses, which we'll talk about later when we'll talk about the limitation. Okay. Taxpayer with multiple businesses. What happens if you have more than one business? And many taxpayers, they have more than one business. The deduction for qualified... <coughs> I'm so sorry. The deduction for qualified business income must be determined separately for each qualified trade or business. So you treat each one separately. Then you, then these independent calculation then combine to becoming qualified business income amount. Then these combined amount then compare to the overall modified taxable income. So you just add them all together. Then you compare them to the overall. Let's take a look at this example. Assume Abby is a single taxpayer who does not itemize deduction and operates a sole proprietorship over the year. Her business generated 140000 of business income and 40,000 of deductible expenses and 2,000 of interest income from her business deposit. She has no other resources of income. Abby's AGI is 102. Okay, so let's compute her modified taxable income. Let's compute her or let's start with qualified business income. Qualified business income. What is the qualified business income? Well, it's 140,000 minus 40,000 equal to 100,000. Simply put, I don't include the interest as qualified business income. So that's her qualified business income. Well, let's, let's go a step further, multiply it by 20%. That's 20,000. The next thing I need to compute is her modified taxable income. Her modified taxable income. How do we compute the modified taxable income? We're going to take adjusted gross income which is we are giving adjusted gross, adjusted gross income minus the standard deduction, which is because this individual says it's single. The standard deduction is 12,000 equal to uh, 90,000. Now we are not given any information. Uh, we're not, we're not, we're not given any capital gain here. Therefore, her modified taxable income is 90,000. We're going to multiply this also by 20% and that's going to give us 18,000. Now what we have to do is to choose between the lower of 20% of modified taxable income or 20% of qualified business income. Obviously, modified taxable income is lower, which is 18,000. Therefore, what we do is we'll take adjusted gross income, which is 90,000 minus 18,000, which was going to give us 72,000, and that's the taxable income. So simply put, what happened is this additional 18,000 qualified business income deduction gave the taxpayer a lower taxable income by 72,000. This is the benefit of the qualified business income deduction. And this is the solution for it. Okay. Um, assume the same fact in example 10, except that Abby has, has no interest income, but 2,000 of qualified dividend income. Okay. No interest, but 2,000 of qualified dividend. Abby's AGI remain 102 and her taxable income before the qualified business income is same thing, 102 minus 12,000. However, Abby's modified taxable income is now 88. Why? Because what's going to happen is we're going to take taxable income before the deduction, then we're going to subtract net capital gain that include qualified income. Therefore, we're going to deduct 2,000. Therefore, her modified taxable income equal to 88. Now we'll take 88 times 20% and 100,000, which is the qualified business income times 20% times 
that's 20,000 and obviously this should be less this should be 17,600 we're going to take this as a deduction so it's going to be 90,000 minus 17,600 which her taxable income AB's taxable income will be 72,400 okay <coughs> Let's take a look at this example. In 2018, Megan Carlson is a single taxpayer report qualified business income of 110 and modified taxable income of 78. What's the qualified business income deduction? Well, guess what? We're given both numbers. If you're giving both numbers, hopefully you'll get something like this on the CPA when they're starting to test this. Well, simply you will take 110 and 78,000. They're giving you both they're giving you qualified business income and they're giving you the modified taxable income so this is qualified business income and this is modified taxable income and i will multiply this by 20 percent i multiply this by 20 percent and i know this is going to be lower therefore if i take 110 times 20 percent that's going to give me 22,000. if i take 78,000 times 20 percent it's going to give me 15,600. therefore it's 15,600. now let's take a look at another example Charlotte is a partner and sales manager for CD Partners, a domestic business that is not specified trade, that's not a specified service trade or business. So it, it's, it qualifies basically. During the tax year, she received a guarantee payment of 250 from the partnership for her services to the partnership as its sales manager. In addition, her distributive share of CD Partnership ordinary income was 175,000. What is the qualified business income? So they're asking us what's the qualified business income. Well, guess what? You have to know that guarantee business payment, not qualified business income. Let me go back and show you. You want to make sure you memorize this. Okay. Qualified business income does not include capital gains, capital losses, dividend, interest income, certain, certain other investments, reasonable compensation, guaranteed payment. You want to make sure you memorize this. You know that those are not included in qualified business income. So what's the, her qual what's the qualified business income? The qualified business income is only the amount for from the K-1, which is 175000 Okay, so basically what's going to happen at some point, she's going to come up with 175 times 20%. Then she's going to figure out her modified taxable income times 20%. Take the lower of these two, and that's going to be the qualified business income deduction. Now, I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. I did not get to the limitation yet. Eventually, eventually I will get to the limitation in the next sessions. If you have any questions about this session, email me. Um, if you're studying for your exam, for the CPA exam, study hard. If you want additional lectures, visit my website. If you happen to visit my website, please consider donating. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.